Hello everybody, my name is Lea Kröber and I'm very happy to give you a brief overview of our paper in which we investigated car drivers' information demand after safety and security critical incidents. So imagine you are driving your brand new Tesla on the motorway and you activate the autopilot feature which you find to be amazing as your car is now able to automatically steer, accelerate and brake within its lane. But then this happens. So what actually did happen? If you think about it, it's not really clear just from experiencing the situation. And this motivated us to come up with our research questions. So first, which kind of information do people want and need in order to cope with and assess the situation correctly? Second, how does information demand shift according to different situational factors? And last but not least, are the potential error sources even clear to people? In order to answer our research questions, we conducted an MTurk survey with 60 participants. We included two scenarios. Um, the first one is based off of the video we just saw, and the second one is about a minor key malfunctioning. And we had uh, three conditions where the car offered different kinds of explanations. So either the car attributed its malfunctioning to a technical problem, to a malicious intrusion, or it did not offer any explanation at all. We gathered um, qualitative data, which we evaluated with open coding. And we applied a thematic analysis and a correspondence analysis in order to make sense of our data. So uh, I'd like to give you a brief tour um, through our key findings, starting with the thematic analysis. We were able to identify 18 different information types, which we grouped into four uh, topics that are closely connected. And what we then did is we looked at the different perceived error causes our participants reported and um, looked how they corresponded to those information types. And what we found is that people have a fundamental information demand, which is then extended by error specifics. So for example, um, if a participant thought the malicious uh, intrusion was the error source, then this participant had an increased information demand for situational type of information. Um, also, we took those different perceived error causes together with other um, situational factors. So for example, whether or not participants uh, thought of the situation as highly or less critical, or the general impression of how the car reacted, and looked how those factors moderated information types. So we conducted a correspondence analysis, and this is one byplot that came out of it. This one describes the crash scenario. And what we can see here is that we have a very dense information demand. So um, we have no really strong discriminating factor except for the perceived error cause malicious intrusion. This sparked an, ad an additional information demand for situational type of information. And what's very interesting is that people did not think of malicious intrusions as potential error sources um, on their own, unless, they, unless we primed them for it. So the key takeaways are that people have a fundamental information demand, which is extended by error specifics. Nobody identified hex as a potential source of error unless we primed them for it, so across all scenarios and all conditions. And in general, we need to identify and communicate error sources, especially in highly critical scenarios, as we just saw. So thank you very much um, for your attention and take a look at our paper if you like to.